Let us consider a problem not unlike what Coulomb used in order to derive his empirical force law. Let us suppose we have two small charges, Q, that are like sign charges, and they are located at the length, are suspended by small strings of length L from some upper surface. Because of their like sign charge, they will experience a repulsive force and they will move, try to move away from one another. Of course, there's gravity still pulling down, and as a result, these two charges will be suspended in midair uh, at some angle. And using the, our knowledge of what the gravitational force on these charges is and the repulsive force, we can determine what that angle will be. We may assume that this angle is a rather small number. When measured in radians, it will be a number much less than 1. It is helpful to begin by drawing a free body diagram on one of the charges, let's say the left-hand one. We know that there are three forces acting on this charge. There is gravity pulling it straight down, and if it has a mass little m, then the force acting straight down is little m times g. There is the Coulomb repulsion from the adjacent charge, and we'll call that F sub C. It points over to the left because the right-hand charge is trying to drive the left-hand charge further over to the left. There is a third force acting on this charge, and that is the string itself. It provides a tension, which prevents the char charge both from falling and from being moved further over to the left. We may write Newton's second law that the sum of the forces in the x-direction has to equal the mass times acceleration in the x-direction. If the object is not moving, after coming to equilibrium, we know that this acceleration will be zero. And if we look at the figure, all the forces in the x-direction are the Coulomb force, which points in the negative direction to the left, and a component of the tension. The tension actually points off at some angle, and the fraction of it that points along the horizontal, or the x-direction in this case, is t times sine of theta. We may also write Newton's second law in the y direction, which is up and down, and there are two forces in the y direction. There is mg pointing down in the negative direction, and there is a component of the tension pointing up, and that component will be t times cosine theta. Again, if the object is not moving, we know that this sum of forces must equal zero, because the acceleration in the y direction is zero, just like in the x direction. Therefore, we have two equations, t sine theta equals the Coulomb force, and t cosine theta equals the gravitational force. If we take the ratio of these two equations, we obtain that the t will cancel out the tension, and we obtain sine of theta over cosine theta on the left, or tangent of theta, and the ratio of the Coulomb force over the gravitational force on the right. The Coulomb force is k times the charge squared, because there are two charges of equal size, divided by the distance squared, x squared. And the gravitational force is just mg. If we simplify this expression just a bit, it's kq squared over mg x squared. This distance x can be found using the length of the string and the unknown angle of the, of the strings with respect to the vertical direction. We know that x over 2 divided by L equals sine of theta. And since tangent of theta and sine of theta are roughly equal to one another, when the angle theta is small, this is roughly equal to L times tangent of theta. If we insert that in our expression for x and get rid of x, then we find that tangent cubed of theta is equal to kq squared over 4l squared mg. And this gives us the angle theta in terms of quantities that we already knew, the constant k, the charge q, the length of the string, and the mass times little g. In the case of Coulomb first deriving this force law, he actually knew the charge in some units, length of the string, and the mass of the, the charged objects. And he was trying to measure that this, if this angle would grow as the square of the length of the string or the square of the charge, and would make the cube of the tangent of the angle grow as, as this expression does. And that's how he proved Coulomb's force law.